What's up guys and welcome back to another video. I have not posted a video in over a year, been slacking. So I woke up this morning, Saturday, figured, hey, why not shoot a video? I'm gonna be doing some property deal analysis, take a look at some multifamily on Long Island, which is where I live, and see if I can find a deal. And I'll bring you guys with me so maybe you can learn something and we can uh, both break down the deal ourselves. So let's get right into it. All right guys, so let's get into this. I figured it might be easier. I already vetted this deal. This is actually a deal um, that I went and took a look at about a month ago. I came up on the MLS. I'm an agent on, in New York, so I have access to the New York State MLS, um, actually the Long Island MLS. Um, and this came up and it caught my eye. Um, so I decided to go take a look at it about a month ago. And so I'll just break down this deal with you and how I, um, how I took a look at this deal. So this is in a, an area called East Patchog um, in New York, in, on Long Island. It's in Suffolk County. Um, it's an interesting property. It's a duplex, um, and the pictures look pretty good on it, honestly. Um, it's got a lot of land. The taxes were fairly decent, so I decided to take a look at it. So let's break this down, guys. Um, so the purchase price, the list price, actually, rather, is about $500,000. Um, right now, it's tempor temporarily off the market. Um, and that actually went into effect a few days ago. Not sure what happened, what, what they're doing with it, but um, it went off the market. So about $7,800 in taxes. It was built in 1930. Um, it has a little cottage in the back, which is interesting. So that's the duplex. So it's one, it's one home on the front. That's the main house, which is most of the photos. All these photos is just the main house, um, which is four bedrooms and one bathroom and then it has a small cottage out back that is one bedroom one bath and that is this right here it has no photos of the inside of that but in the description it basically says um you know beautiful home two-story back porch private patio and yard dwelling has separate yard for each for, for the for the studio for the one bedroom in the backyard and for the main house um it says the the additional cottage is basically you know open concept blah 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 so it sounds pretty good that's the the additional cottage is what makes this an interesting deal otherwise it would it wouldn't make any sense at all um and it says it has low flood insurance which is good because this is very close to the water it actually says the flood insurance is 1670 dollars per year for both dwellings so let's go down here we find out that the number of heat units um, it doesn't actually say, but I know it's only one. Electric meters is one and gas meters one. Um, so it doesn't have separate utilities, which is not what you want to see. Not great. Um, sewer description is a cesspool. Um, so you have to uh, account for that in your numbers. That's, that's going to be maintenance every single month. So we'll move down here. Basically just talks more about the floor plan. Nothing special. It has a washer dryer, which is good in the basement. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's the gist of this listing. So let's break down the numbers. Um, let's go through these photos one more time. I'll zoom in a little here so you can see these photos a little better. I don't know if this is doing you any favors. So pretty interesting property here. Sorry, I'm just going fast through this. Um, but let me break it down. It's in decent shape. You just want to get a feel for the, the general shape of the house. It's in good shape. So let's break this down, guys, in my property analysis spreadsheet that I have created. Um, so here are the property taxes we're going to put, a, put in at $7,700. Always know that depending on the purchase price of the property, this number can go up pretty drastically um, depending on what the assessment is for that the, the, the town or the city that you're in. Um, what it assesses the property at after that for the taxes. So make sure you take a look at that number. It could always go up. I just put it in for what it is now because it actually is not selling for much more than it was purchased for um, only about a year ago. So the person actually bought this property only a year ago and they're selling it right away. So um, I'm saying the purchase price would be for, I would be willing to maybe pay 475 for this property. So going a little bit under there, um, we could always go lower than that. You could play with this number to see what actually makes the numbers work. But just off the bat for now, we'll say, uh, we'll, we'll offer them 475. I'm saying the after repair value is about what it's worth. The purchase closing 
Closing costs, I always estimated about 3% of the purchase price. So we got 14,000 and you guys always want to make sure, especially on Long Island, it's really expensive, the closing costs. So you always want to make sure you're not missing that number because that's money you have to come out, come to the closing table with. I'm saying there's always some type of repairs. I'm going to estimate 5,000. Um, this is just a breakdown of each individual repair. I didn't go through that. Um, this is just old uh, miscellaneous, but I just I just put it in at 5,000. That's what I'm estimating before I go too deep into what it actually is. And you guys definitely want to go much deeper into detail about this. But once you walk the property um, and do all that and get into get it under contract um, and take a look at the home inspection, then you can do a much better assessment of the repair cost um, and decide after that. So the turtle project cost I'm saying is $494,000 after the repairs and the down payment, I'm um, sorry, and the closing costs. So this is the loan section. So I'm considering a standard conventional uh, loan, 30 year mortgage right now. Uh, you could see it's October 22nd, 2022. The interest rates right now are just below 7%. This is going to go higher. Um, for right now, I did 7%, but if you want to be more conservative, you know, it takes a while for a property to close. You can pretty much estimate that it's going to be, a, you know, higher than this. Talk to your loan officer um, or, or talk to your mortgage, um, your mortgage officer too about this. Um, but 7%, just estimate that. It does a little calculation and it tells me what my down down payment would be. Sorry, my, that was my phone just going off. I'm going to mute that. So this is down payment. This is considering a 25% down payment. So you can see 0.75 because this is going to be, I'm considering this as an investment property, um, completely separate from a primary residence. So the minimum down payment that most people want to see for that is 25% down. So here's where the income, the gross monthly income comes in. Uh, I'm considering that one bedroom cottage is $1,300 and that I could rent it for and the four bedroom I think would rent for $3,200. Now, how would I find that out? Um, I have access to the MLS, which basically shows me all the, uh, all, the, all the places that have rented in the past in this area. But you could easily go on Zillow, go on Craigslist, Redfin, take a look at what what have what the rental market is like right now, and you can easily you know estimate this. Call you could also call those places up, call realtors up in the area, ask them, hey, what are things going for? Um, you know, what does a one bedroom go for? What does a four bedroom go for? So forty five hundred. This is just uh, how much I would pay in mortgage, and it's a little calculation. So mortgage and interest, principal and interest. Then for the electricity, remember, it's only one meter. So you essentially, as the landlord, have to pay for all of it because it's not fair. Um, unless you can try to figure out a way to build into the lease um, a way that they would split it, maybe 70-30, maybe 80-20. But a lot of times it just never works out because people always complain, tenants always complain about, hey, they're using a lot more than I am, blah, blah, blah. So unless you really separate the meters physically, um, I would say the landlord should just pay this. So $250 for the electric for the property, $75 for water and garbage, uh, propane and gas. Um, it has natural gas, but the little cottage has propane. You got to pay for that $150. Um, you could also build into the lease that, you know, the, the cottage has to pay for its own propane uh, because that is actually separate um, and, and that's coming out separately. They, they just deliver the propane tank to you every month. But I'm going to say $150. Flood insurance, they told us exactly what it was. So $140 a month. Homeowner's insurance, we're going to say it's 200 a month. Um, definitely check, check with your insurance on, on this. and get you. They, they can usually give you a free estimate. Property taxes are just broken down from the number. I think it was 70, you know, 7,000 something. We pro just broke that down monthly. And then lawn and snow care removal, I'd hire someone uh, to take care of that throughout the year because this is about uh, an hour drive for me. And it wouldn't make sense for me to drive all the way there to do that. Uh, to get to the property. And then cesspool, I'm averaging 50 bucks a month um, just to, you know, if you have to redo the cesspool or whatever is involved with that, it's most likely going to be $0 every month, but then you might get a hit with a bill that's a few hundred dollars. So you definitely want to budget for that. Uh, now going down here, the variable monthly expenses, uh, vacancy, you always want to take a look at this. These are these variable monthly expenses people don't account for and they get in trouble that's how they get in a lot of trouble and, and they and they say oh it's great cash flow blah 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 uh but no it's actually not because you're not accounting for all of this which can quickly uh erase any cash flow you have made so 360 dollars i always estimate eight percent of the total rent roll 
um, 200 bucks for the repairs and maintenance and capital expenditures, 300 bucks. Now, how did I get that? I have these separate uh, calculators here that I believe I got off biggerpockets.com. Now you just go through, type in what the details are on the property and it spits out an estimated number. It's not an exact science by any means, but it's just a good rule of thumb to, to estimate for. Um, but that could change as well. So this is just a 50% rule of thumb. You could skip that. Um, so this is pretty much the meat and potatoes. This is it. Um, the monthly income, 4,500. Monthly expenses, 4,800. So you'd be losing $300 a month. Um, and you would need $138,000 out of pocket um, for this property. And the cash on cash, cash return is negative 2.61%. So this is not a good deal. Uh, this will not make you money. And at the purchase price of 475, which is already below uh, the purchase price, you know, the, the asking price, which is 499. Uh, so this was just a quick breakdown. These were some notes. So I actually went out to this property and got a little more detail uh, just to take a look at it. It's always good to, even if the, the property doesn't look like it's going to work on paper, go out to it. Maybe there's something that you're missing on the property. Um, you know, maybe there's something that can completely blow this out of the water. Maybe there's an extra bedroom that they're not listing. There's a lot of times that they, they, uh, the realtor won't actually put in the correct information. So there's a single old, older man living in the cottage in the back for a thousand dollars a month, including all the utilities. So he's already below rent. Uh, which is not good, and he's been there for a long time. In New York, it's difficult to evict, um, or if you if you wanted to raise him up to market rent at thirteen hundred, um, it's it, it, he might not like that. You know, it's just an added layer of complexity and difficulty to that. Um, the, and the cottage, I found out, is more of a studio. Once you get there, they kind of tell you the real details of what's going on. They wouldn't even let me in the cottage because the the um, the man was occupying it at the time and didn't want anyone in there. So the cottage is more of a studio. So, you know, it's really not going to be, the, I was assuming maximum $1,500 a month, but that's more like $1,300 a month because it's just a small studio. Um, you know, we, I would really need to figure out how to separate the utilities to make this work. Um, and that would be difficult. And flood flood insurance is low because I saw that the property was raised up a bit from the street, which is good. It had a new sump pump in the basement, um, and I was considering maybe seeing if this could be a possible Airbnb property. Um, but after looking at the, you know, what's in the area, it doesn't really have a draw to the area. There's nothing there that would make someone go out and and um, use this property as an Airbnb. So that wouldn't really work. Um, you'd be under 50% occupancy most of the time, unless it's in the summer, which it just wouldn't work out. All right, guys, so that was the deal analysis. That was a, just a quick example of how I usually run through my numbers on any property that I'm taking a look at. Um, let me know if that helped you out. Let me know if you guys like this video. I think I'm just gonna keep doing a bunch of these videos because one, uh, selfishly, it keeps me accountable uh, to make these to do these deal analysis every single time I make a video. So every time I do a deal analysis, I'm gonna to try to record it and see if I can just post a video and who knows, maybe someone out there will actually enjoy it. And um, it seems like people in the past over a year ago when I did a couple of these videos seemed to enjoy it and people reached out to me. So I'm gonna keep doing them and I will catch you guys soon. Take care.